Welcome to this tutorial in which we will cover 2D compositing in Smode. Today we will look at how to create and manage layers in Smode. In our first tutorial, we looked at how to create our media directory to import media. If you haven't watched this tut, I suggest you do so before starting this one. Today we are using the version 8.0 of Smode. It's slightly more advanced than the current 7.7 .7 version, with a few changes in the interface, but nothing drastic. So I'm going to start by creating a new composition where I will import the media. One video and one, one image. And I'm going to explain how a layer works in Smode. For that I have created a third layer by using either control space in the search bar here, or with right click. I'll choose noise. And this is going to show us all the common points between the layers in Smode. So here is the parameter editor. We can see that in each layer, there is a common point which is called render type. In this first area, we have the generator, which shows us the resolution of the video as well as its color information. There's also the standalone player, which when activated creates a player which by default allows me to read the video. By default, the loop option is enabled. This area of the editor is the renderer type, which shows that the media is being displayed once with no repetition and that it is parametric, allowing us to rotate, scale and manipulate the video. There are other types of placements, for example, the perspective mode. To use this, we have to activate the edit mode here. And as you can see, we can manipulate the image in perspective mode, like so. There are other types of placements. To show you, I'll just choose this image here and choose Bezier Patch, which allows me to modify the image like a mesh warp. Now we're going to take a look at the modifiers, which are the effects on images. We can access the modifiers using right click on our image. So say I want to match this image to the other images, I can choose Color, Exposure, and down here change the contrast. And I'll add a tritone by pressing Control Space up here and writing Tritone. That way, if you don't know where to find a modifier, you can search for it. And here we have the color picker. One thing to be aware of in Smode is the layer priority, which reads from top to bottom. This means that if I put the exposure above the tritone, it won't have the same effect as if the tritone was under the exposure. As you can see, there is a small change here, simply because we applied the exposure first and after the gradient. If I do the opposite, the tritone affects the image first and then the exposure will affect the tritone and the image. So those are the color modifiers. We can also use transformation modifiers such as distort I'll show you an example using this shrub image, which I want to repeat at the bottom of my composition. For this, I right click and choose Distort, 2D Transformation, and bring down the scale here in parameters, for example. So now we are going to look at how masks work in Smode. Masks in Smode allow us to change the opacity of a layer. We can do this to an image, a video, or a modifier. We will use our Tritone modifier for this example. So to apply a mask, I right click on the modifier and add a placement mask under masks. Now if I move this mask, you can see that the mask is applied only to the Tritone mod modifier. So here we can see that the Tritone modifier is at 100% under its mask. And outside the mask, it is not applied. Down here in the parameters of the mask, we have Feather, which allows me to fade in the effect. We can also use these masks on layers. If we take this layer, for example, and we want to mask the bottom part of it down here, you go right click and go to Masks, Placement Mask, and this time I don't apply the feather all around the mask, but only to the bottom by separating the feather here. So as I mentioned before, these masks change the intensity of an effect. With the color correction modifier, the effect is obvious. 
However, if we go back and apply a distort modifier to this layer, in the same way as we did before with the repetition of the shrub, with a mask we can create another effect. So I'm going to use the 2D transform and here in advanced under warp modes, I will make it transparent and then move the image a little bit to the bottom of the composition. Now I will apply a polygonal mask on the 2D transform. For the polygonal mask to work, I have to be in edit mode and then holding control, I click on the image where I want my mask points to be. Now you can see that in the middle, I have my effect, which is applied and outside of the mask, there is no effect. As you can see, at 0%, the effect works like this, and at 100%, like this. And if I change the feather of my mask, you can see the intensity of the effect is disappearing closer to the edge of the mask. This way I can create lots of different transformations such as warps or ripples, for example. So now we are going to have a look at how to organize a composition and how to group layers. To make a group, I select a few layers and use Control shift g A group is just an element with placement information. Once again, if I want to, I can change the placement type to Perspective or Bezier, for example. But it isn't rasterized, so I can't add a 2D modifier. The other way to group layers is to make a composition by selecting the layers and using Control shift c or right-click Make Composition and now these layers are grouped and are rasterized, which means it can be used like any other media. And on this comp, I can add various modifiers. At the beginning of this video, I explained the difference between the generator and the renderer. We are going to take a closer look at this. I will import a video and change the blend mode to screen and then play it using the standalone player. Something to know about Smode is that to display a video isn't that demanding. However, playing and decompressing videos in Smode demands greater calculating power. So if I want to duplicate this video, I can, like this. This can be useful if I have a video I want to desynchronize, but when I do this, there will be two playbacks of the same video at the same time, which is taxing on the computer. So if I just want to duplicate the video, I can add a renderer by pressing Control shift a or right-click Add Renderer, and now what has happened is that I select my source video down here, and I have my renderer type, which is shown as a group renderer, and is displayed here twice as two parametric placements. And once again, we can change this using Perspective or Bezier, etc. So these parametric placements mean that Smode is only decoding video once, which means that it can be copied many times without the frame rate being reduced. This leads me to Smode's profiling tool up here. When I activate it, I can see what is being consumed in terms of resources for Smode. So duplicating videos like this is more efficient because Smode uses less power to display a video than to decode it. Let's talk about organizing our compositions. Before I spoke about modifier chains, so I'll just flip one of these videos here using vertical flip. And let's say that I want to add contrast to both smokes and I want to make one red and one blue, for example. So I can select my video source and add a brightness contrast gamma. And here is what happens if I change the contrast. We can see that it is being applied to both renderers, both smokes. And now if I want to modify one of these elements, I can right click on the parametric that I want and choose color tritone. So red smoke for the first one and control drag and drop to add the modifier to the second smoke and just change the color to blue. I can add modifiers to local or global renderers. And for example, here I can see that there is some overlapping of my images. So I just add a placement mask to the source video with a feather and the feather is applied to both smokes.
So without going into too much detail, I'm going to show how shared elements work. Here you can see that I duplicated the smoke, but let's say that I want the smoke in front and behind the arch. Then I can't do it like this because I can only displace the element as a block. So we have a way of sharing our elements using the same logic of one generator and multiple displays. To do this, I right click on the source video, choose share element, and now I have a reference which is a generator of my smoke media and an instance of this generator, which is down here. And now I can duplicate this instance using control drag and drop. I can move it behind the image and wherever I like in the composition. And like before, all the videos are synchronized by using one generator with multiple instances. As you can see, the mask that I have on my source video here is applied to all my instances, whilst the local modifiers are applied to their own instances. There will be another tutorial about this part because it's slightly complicated to use, but it can be considered as a type of pre-composition. Now let's talk about presets in Smode. You can find the presets when you click on an element in the parameter editor. They are found under Presets tab here. Now I will add a global modifier at the root of the composition and I will use the lookup table modifier under Color. And I can access the presets in this submenu that you can see here. These are the presets of this modifier. Over here we have the advanced presets on the left under standard pack presets advanced presets. I will add colorize under the color modifier. Let's choose old flames, which is a color preset. And if I go into the presets of colorize, we can see that colorize is divided into different parts. One part is for choosing the channel we want to work with, luminescence, etc. A curve for the color level, a gradient, and here you can see that we have a gradient preset which is different from the colorized preset. This preset will only be applied to the quadritone, and you can find it in all other elements of Smode which use the quadritone. So there are presets per element and presets for subparts of elements. To finish up, I will use my favorite compo based final polish which is a preset using exposure, vibrance, a vignette, and a side blur. To finish this video, I'm going to show you a couple of extras. At the beginning of the video, I only move my layer using the percentage. I can also make the units pixels. And the last thing is to configure a second output. Go to Edit. built-in video output, I unfold, and here I can choose which monitor my output will be on. This helps accelerate Smode's render. If you have a composition which is a bit sluggish, you can click output and go full screen. If you want to escape this view, press Control alt shift w So don't forget to click on air and then output if you want to optimize your playback. To save the composition, you use Control S or File Save, choose a file and save. So thanks for watching this tutorial and we'll see you next time.